we had a lot of traffic and parking. Uh, the uh, National Planning for the Department uh, does call for more parking, just so you know. Uh, so the future meetings and uh, once we get that done. Uh, but again, thanks a lot for coming out. Uh, here, first of all, thank the elected officials here, uh, John Park and Lily Jones. For the, yeah, there's Lily over there. John Park over there. District 2 Council member, District 1 Council member. Uh, is there anyone here who uh, uh, would see the board of commissioners? You guys would just kind of stand up. I'd like to thank all of you. Oh, so, thank you all. Uh, there's there's boards and commissions that the city has um, that people take uh, volunteer their time and efforts to go. And anytime we can thank them uh, because they do a lot of good stuff. I don't see any candidates in here for elected officials, so it's where politicians are. Not, so, uh, uh, and I want to introduce our new city manager. Um, we should see there. I'll have him come up and introduce himself real quick. We just hired him, was it yesterday? Two days, Two days ago. <laughs> um, and uh, he's going to take over on June 6th. We're really excited. Uh, he's coming from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, where he was in County Manor, County, which is the county of Cincinnati, which is very large. A lot of experience, a lot of experience about the, the traffic, about development, right sizing, and such. And I'll let him kind of quickly. Thank you for all, I think I've met half of you already in other places or you've reached out to me, but uh, the community's been very welcoming. As a nurse, I don't start until the 6th, but I'm already immersing myself into this. Uh, Council Member Park had me running through the woods earlier today. Uh, and I snuck up on Gary's staff this morning, a couple of them. I was out thoroughly, but, but anyway, I'm getting to know the neighborhood and uh, got settled into an apartment and I'm really looking forward to it. Brookhaven has some really great plans and great vision, and I'm excited to see that roll out over the next few years. And I think the community is really going to enjoy it. This transportation is going to have to be a big part of it, so uh, it'll work out. You know, we'll bear the voices and we'll make these things work. We'll work together as a team and we'll put some good stuff out there. Back to you, Mayor. Thank you.
and kind of sat around and said, well, let's try to fix or solve this um, or come up with ideas as quick as possible. And, and everyone really shared a lot of plans. They all got in a room, the, the working group got in a room. We had a, one meeting, we said, let's, let's continue this. Everyone got in a room and started sh uh, swapping uh, plans. That was supposed to take two months or so. Uh, they got it done in about three, three weeks. We were able to have another meeting. Um, and so we we're really uh, going as fast as we can to go for it. We all wish that we could walk, wave that magic wand and come up with a plan and solution, find the cash yesterday. Um, it doesn't work that way. It takes a long period of time, a lot of moving pieces. But again, you know, that is you know, what with the PC Road area, that's kind of a focus has been on, on that task force to try to mitigate Peachtree, North Druid. We have the Ashford Dunwoody Traffic Study, which we're going to uh, talk about, give a little presentation today, um, um, and such. So we're going to share what we've been working on. Um, and then after we have these presentations, we're going to sit back and listen. We can ask your questions, share your concerns, uh, and uh, that will be part of the you know, records. Uh, and then we we'll can close up. So, um, as I have usually I've done these things very informally, um, but uh, so once we get to that, you guys just you know, raise your hand, we'll just start making things off. And you ask a question, I'll turn to experts most of the time. I try not, I'm not an expert. Um, and so, but with that, uh, we'll start up and we'll start with Richard Greenham, who's from uh, City Brookhaven, uh, to give us a kind of overview. Thank you, Mayor. Um, of course, my name is, many of you know me, Richard Meehan. I'm the now public works director, but have been doing the traffic engineering for the city pretty much since the start of the city, so I'm real familiar with all of the traffic and all the issues going on. Um, basically, what's the responsibility of the city with regards to the road? Basically, we are responsible for maintaining, operating, and improving, ultimately, the responsibility of all the public streets that are at least city owned within the city. Um, there's also, we also have state routes that go through the city. While we have some jurisdiction to help operate and potentially improve those, we have to work with Georgia DOT who has jurisdiction over that route. So we can't make any changes on those roads without Georgia, you know, without partnering with Georgia DOT and without their approving those changes on those roads. Um, so how do we go about this? Well, where we started when we became a city is we didn't have any plan at all. We had some old plans from DeKalb County that were, that were lying around. So one of the first things we did as part of the whole comprehensive planning process is we developed a comprehensive transportation plan. And that's what the 30,000 foot view that the mayor had mentioned. Uh, we did that two years ago. And what that was, was start to get feedback from the community. Where are the issues? What are the problems? What would the community like to see improved? And from that, we developed a project now, of course, being that it was a 30,000 foot view, there was not a lot of areas were identified like it said, well, Peachtree resident is needs approved. But because of the scope and the funding and the time frame we had to do that plan, we couldn't necessarily dig deep down into the details to come up with specific plans. So what came out of that plan, there were a few specific projects that were identified, but a lot of what was identified in that plan were the areas that needed further study. One of those areas that was Peace Free, Dresden, North Rue Hills area. Another one was Ashford Dunwoody Quarter. Um, the other one was we needed, it was identified we needed a bicycle tra uh, trail and uh, pedestrian plan. And so that's what we're starting to work on now. We've just completed our bicycle, pedestrian, and trail plan. The city council adopted that a couple months ago. That, for those that are, want to get in there, it is posted on our website if you want to read through 400 pages. But there's some important stuff with maps and projects. But what has, what's developed out of that is there's a specific project list that's like a, probably I would say, a well, there's short, mid, and long-term visions. I'm not going to put years on that because part of the years gets to, like the mayor said, is the cash. How much cash are we going to put into that? But it sets some priorities and some goals for the city for projects. Um, one of the other areas that we're actively working on that 
Jamie Cochran is going to talk about later on is the Astro Dumpy Porter study and what we're doing with that. And the last bit, one, the other one we're actively working on, well, I will mention one other, one specific project that we're working on is the Peachtree Creek Greenway project that's down along the highway. We're developing a specific master plan for that project and we'll be coming to council probably within the month for them to adopt, officially adopt that master plan. We're doing finishing touches on that. The last piece that we're now getting underway is, of course, this Peachtree North Ridge Hills resident area. Um, and there's a couple different studies going on. Of course, each of the developments that are coming in are doing their own traffic studies and sending to us for review. In addition to that, with the Martyr TOD, they are large enough that under the Greta, they have to do their own traffic study to meet Greta's requirements. Um, the, with both of those traffic studies for these developments, both the Greta one and for the other developments coming in, it's going to be more short-term focused, looking between now and when their, their development will be planned to be open. It is. What we are doing, have planned going on the city, is looking at a much broader, long-term, and a much bigger area. Um, we're actually in contract negotiations right now with a with a consultant, and we have a um, to get that traffic study underway. We're rolling it into a bigger project. One of the one of the projects the city we inherited from uh, DeKalb County was a project to improve pedestrian and streetscape along Peachtree Road, um, and we have a grant from ARC and from GDOT with some federal funding in it to to. Um, move that project forward, both on the design side and the construction side. What we're doing as part of that project is, instead of just going and adding a sidewalk on Peachtree without looking at the big picture, we enhance the scope of that project to include a more comprehensive traffic study. And the, it's going to be all of Peachtree Road within the city, all of Dresden Drive from Peachtree to Claremont, and all of North Druid Hills Road from Peachtree all the way down to Buford Highway. We didn't go beyond Buford Highway because George DOT is a separate um, project underway to uh, look at that corridor below Buford Highway, so we didn't want to have to double up on top of that. But the idea that's going to come out of that, where is the Martyr TOD study and these other studies are going to look what's going to happen in the next five years. Our study is going to take that five year and expand it out to 20 years and look at what do we want, part of that will come out of that is what do we want each tree, Dresden, and North Ridge Hills to look like over the next 20 years, what are the improvements that would need to be made, and while the construction project that we got the grant for may still be just the pedestrian improvements, it will help set a blueprint for all the projects that will come out of that in the future and now we can put it to the priority list and to identify funding. And again, you know, I'll get back with mention one thing about funding. You know, there's a lot of avenues for funding. We can always obviously we there's city funds that we use that are identified and allocated by the mayor and council for projects. We also are looking to go to a Georgia DOT and Atlanta Regional Commission to have funding sources. The one of the things we have to get these plans and lists in with why we haven't moved as fast on these is to go get the money from these grants. We have to have a project identified and the scope identified. We just can't go ask them, give us money so we can do something. We have to tell them what we're going to do to be able to get these grants and funding. And that's where we're getting to right now as we complete these plans. Um, I will mention just briefly one other area we deal with that's kind of associated with this. Is Within the city, we also deal, and I know it's an issue with a lot of these neighborhoods, is traffic calls. And we work with individual neighborhoods. You know, sometimes that ends up being speed humps, but there's more to traffic calming than just speed humps. Um, and some of you who are aware of, of what's coming up before the council at the June 7th meeting for a couple of neighborhoods, it can encompass a lot more than just um, speed humps. And it's a, it's a process that we try to work with each individual neighborhood. There has to be a lot of communications back and forth, and there has to be some level of consensus within the neighborhood to move traffic calming. It's not something that we can, one person calling up say, I want speed humps in my neighborhood, and we can get them in right away. There's a process we have to go through to make sure that that's really what the neighborhood wants, that there's a really a need for it, because we have to do a traffic study. So it is, I know it's frustrating for some of those that go through the process and how long it takes, but it is something that, it does, we want to make sure we do it right because once we put it in and spend that money, um, you know, we, it's harder to take it out and we don't want to do something that then people don't want, end up not wanting, and we don't want to force it on the neighborhood either. We want to make sure the neighborhood has it. So, 
Um, that's what I have. And um, well, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. What I'll do is I'll turn it over to Patrick Allen. Patrick is with Georgia DOT. He's the District Seven traffic engineer for a media to steal his thunder. But the District Seven is the district in GDOT that serves Metro Atlanta, basically all the metro counties except for Atlanta. And so Patrick is a traffic engineer overseeing all that. So Patrick. Thank you. Yeah. 
that we see that in Zayn, you know, Richard, we talk Richard a lot, you know, about how can we solve these problems and, uh, you know, we're doing what we can, uh, considering the, uh, the disability environment. You know, if we have a blank slate, you know, we do it all perfectly, a lot of times, you know, we've got water tracks on one side and other on the other side, so the road, you know, it's going to take a lot to make things bigger, so um, that's perspective from GI, and I'm sure folks will have questions towards the end, so I'll be here to ask you questions. I guess uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, is, that, is that a pause for me or is that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> My name is Ron Ross. I work with uh, Kingley Warren Associates. Uh, we are an engineering and planning consulting firm. Uh, we've been asked by uh, the development team that's working on the, the MARTA TOD to do a traffic study and help them with the, there's, there's actually two processes that they're going to be going through as part, as part of that development. Uh, one is the rezoning here with the city. Uh, and, and that'll be a city control process. And then also there's a, the DRI process that's been mentioned before that stands for the development of regional impact. That basically means it's a, it's a, the development is big enough to meet the threshold to require a regional uh, consideration with the numbers of, it, it adds stakeholders to the review of, of the study that will perform. So uh, we're actually, uh, this, this says draft on the presentation uh, because uh, this project for us is unprecedented. Uh, we've never done a project like this where we, we're actually sharing way more with you now. We're, we're still finishing, we're still doing and finishing the traffic study, uh, but, but we've been engaged in this process at the request of the city to, to share as much information as we can as we find things out. And so, uh, Speak a little bit louder. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so this is still early in the process. A lot of the things that you see may change, uh, and some of the folks here are seeing it. Are, are stakeholders in the process? They haven't seen some of this stuff yet, so uh, they're they're going to have a thorough review of the study. Uh, and so, as we go through that process with all the stakeholders, uh, some of these some of the recommendations you see may change in that process. Uh, so. Uh, very quickly, uh, the MARTA TOD site, I think everybody, uh, under, most everybody should understand where that site is on the parking, on the parking lot surrounding the MARTA station. Um, this, is the, this is the study area that was agreed upon with all the stakeholders, including the city, uh, Greta, uh, GDOT, uh, ARC, um, and, and what what is part of the DRI process are these intersections and driveways immediately around the, the station itself. As part of the rezoning, we're going to add the intersection of the Osborne down at Colonial on East Street, uh, to the south on, at, at Briarwood on North Road Hills, and LJ and Caldwell to, to the east on Dresden. And so it's a little complicated because for the DRI, for the Greta State Review, we're going we're gonna to be looking at those intersections. While we're doing that study, it just makes sense to do them all at the same time. And so these will be subject to review by the city. Uh, these will be subject to review by DOT as well. Because that, that is, like we mentioned before, it's, it's DOT jurisdiction. Uh, so uh, we have already collected traffic counts. We did it on March 30th. Uh, if you remember, some of you may remember that night as the very early on um, March 30th, that was the night that the sheep got loose on Dresden Drive. <laughs> um, so we, we, we try to track what happens in the area around the counts. Luckily, those sheep were cleaned up and taken off the roads before these counts started. So um, that was a first for us. Um, but we usually, normally we have two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon. We kind of three hours in the afternoon just because that peak hour is more like peak hours 
in this area, and so we wanted to make sure what, what we do is we find the highest hour of volume within these counts, and we, that's what we study. We study that worst case within that time frame. Uh, we also collected some two counts, to see, uh, which is 24 hour counts. We laid a tube across the road. Uh, but that just gives us an idea of, of the distribution of the traffic over the course of the four days. Uh, so what we are doing is uh, we're studying existing conditions. So we're going to see uh, what they exist, how everything operates today. I know it's not very well today. Um, we also project out to the future. Uh, the, the 2019 is the year that we're projecting out to. So we look out into the future. We add growth to that traffic that's out there today. And we see what would it look like if nothing happened on this property. Uh, and all the traffic through around it. And then, then we add, we call the build scenario, we add what is proposed as that part of the TOD project. So those are the, those are the three scenarios that we're looking at. Um, to get to that future volume, uh, and this was, this was agreed upon with all the stakeholders, where, where we add a 1.5% annual growth rate to the existing traffic. So every year, we assume it grows of 1.5%. And then we also added specific traffic from those three uh, developments that are uh, proposed or underway in the city. So, uh, I think this is, this is the kind of stuff that, that most everybody's interested in. Um, what we're finding, um, I'm going to focus mostly on Peachtree, that's, that's where we've been focusing uh, to get ahead uh, and, and have some good information to share with everybody. This is the existing intersection of Dresden today. Uh, this is what we're finding and what we're very likely going to recommend it should look like. And there's a couple, well there's, there's two or three changes here. Um, one is uh, uh, adding a left turn light to eastbound on Brookhaven Drive. Uh, another one is to do some restriping on Dresden here, that, where it goes underneath the railroad tracks, to add another lane of capacity westbound towards Peace Street, and provide two turn lanes to come from Dresden onto Peace Street. Uh, the other big change is that long uh, right turn lane that runs across the entire property of Marta. Uh, we think the best thing to do is to restrike that and do some some restriping, probably narrowing the lanes. But we don't we don't know exactly how that will be done yet. Um, but provide three lanes through to go northbound on Peach Street. This is, this is what we're finding, and again, we, we have a, a long process to go through with a number of stakeholders, and all of you are stakeholders as well, and so when we come back and we'll be in the DRI process, we're going to be going through the rezoning, there'll be public hearings uh, as part of the rezoning, uh, and so there'll be a lot more opportunity to talk about these decisions. Before you leave that, can you tell me how, how under your proposal, or anybody's proposal, People are supposed to get out of that water project. Um, how are they supposed to get out and in? Uh, no, there's driveways to Dresden, there's driveways to Apple Valley, there's a driveway through hills, and there's a driveway to Peach Street. But isn't that going to impact, impact Dresden? Um, yes, and all of that is considered in the traffic stuff. And, and that's part of the reason some of these improvements are needed. Sure. Um, can you tell me where the 1.5 percent growth in traffic figure came from? Uh, typically, uh, in, a, in the DRI process, for a number of years, we've been using 1 percent growth. Uh, one and a half was a consideration for the growth that's been in the area, and so we bumped it up more. And on top of that, we added those other those other developments. So it's a pretty it's a high growth rate for what's typically used in the DRIs. Lots of questions. You're sort of skipping over the lane width. Uh, I know you have to know how tight those lanes are going to be. What are they currently, and what would they be reduced to? 
Well, uh, we don't have a survey of the road, uh, but we did run the wheel across the road uh, when there wasn't much traffic, which was late. Uh, and found that it's, uh, it looks like it's about 75 feet from the face of the curve to the face of the curve. Uh, and so uh, to fit. To fit another lane, what percentage of uh, difference is it going to be to, to, to get it in? Uh, it, it, would be, it would be from 12 foot lanes approximately to 10, 10 and a half foot lanes approximately. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Is there any consideration of the traffic, two lanes for traffic to flow south on Peachtree to make the left on Dresden? Because that light, I know, and I'm sorry? Oh, okay. And then I guess the two lanes on Dresden where everything backs up, because that's the five to six light changes before you can even get out of that. Uh, we, we, we didn't talk more specifics of the afterwards. You know, yeah, because let's let's you know do kind of full presentation. Yeah. We're gonna have time at the end. You guys can pen. We're gonna uh, write down the questions and stuff because you know we we want to uh, we want to you know we have the time to eight o'clock today. So let's everyone let's have the presentations and then we'll start asking Pepper and the questions. <laughs> so uh, Mr. Hills, great segue. Uh, the big change here is providing two southbound left turn lanes from Drew Hills, or from Beach Street to turn on Drew Hills. Uh, the rest of the geometry was uh, seemed adequate. Uh, this, and again, this is this is what we what we're looking at right now, without talking to the stakeholders in detail about how it would be, would be done. But it would be using. The, the long right turn lane that goes into the shopping center there uh, and converting that into a through lane, doing some widening on each street to make that move for that additional right turn lane. So, so and, and this is all very conceptual at this stage. So that's it. That, that's, that's the, that's, that's the, 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 big, the big piece of the, of the study that we, we've been focusing on. But if you leave your email address on the pad in the back of the room, I'll be happy to email you 
email is to you. Um, there's a special email address to send us comments on the board whenever you like. We had two major stakeholder meetings in the end of March with over 125 residents of the city. We received over 700 specific comments. Um, we tried to make it as interactive as possible so that people could be very specific about what, where issues were, uh, what they wanted to see, areas that needed to be protected and enhanced versus areas that needed to be changed. The handout here goes into some detail about uh, the purpose of the project uh, and what some of the feedback was that we received in the March meeting. And I won't go over those in detail, but I, I use the term transportation vision very purposefully. Um, when I hear the term traffic, my mind first goes to moving around cars, trying to get cars where they need to go, which is a really important thing in the city of Brookhaven and in in Metro Atlanta in general. But we also have people trying to travel by bicycle, by walking, um, and all age groups, all income sectors, all stages of life, all, all physical abilities. So what we're trying to do is to develop what we call a multimodal transportation vision for the corridor, which addresses the needs of all the users of the corridor, not just people driving their cars through. Um, we have a draft vision for the corridor, which is on the website, and uh, we'll certainly um, make that open to you to take a look at. Feel free to, to wordsmith and tweak it, let us know if we've forgotten anything, or if you see something that needs more emphasis, please um, shoot us a note. We'll be happy to take that into consideration. Um, we did uh, gather some quantitative data at the public meetings in March about what the highest priority issues were from the perspective of the people living and working in the area. And it was a little bit interesting, uh, a little different than we expected. Um, among the highest red um, quarter issues were traffic signal timing in the quarter to make sure that traffic flow is smooth and efficient. Pedestrian safety, which is no surprise, there are several major parks in schools, the YMCA's in the quarter, so there are a lot of people doing active transportation activity. Um, in the corridor that have concerns about their safety. Uh, congestion along the actual Ashford W corridor itself, going from end to end. And then the, the next um, highest rate category was congestion at intersections. We know that just because of the challenges in the corridor, the many functions that Ashford Dudley serves, um, certain intersections are really tough for turning traffic and causes bottlenecks in places, which uh, is annoying to other travelers in the corridor. So we're trying to get a fix on that. Um, we're analyzing brand new traffic data that was recently collected, and we'll be doing that over the next couple of months. In August, we'll be preparing to have a community-wide charrette, which means it's just a, a hands-on, interactive public workshop for anyone who wants to come, bring your friends, your family, your coworkers, anyone, anyone who has an interest in the corridor, we'd love to have you. Um, and the idea will be for us to show you um, what the current conditions are in the corridor, uh, some ideas for how to meet the future needs as the area, as the city grows, and as the area around it grows. And then we're going to test some options on you to see which, which options or which potential improvements, um, you know, ring true with you and, and if, if you're supportive of those. Our plan is to have the charrette in September and then come to the city council in the late October, early November time frame to present the recommendations and then move forward to the next phase of the study, which is to, to go down an even uh, deeper level on, on how the uh, suggested improvements can be implemented. So I'm sorry if this was such a quick brain up, but if you have any questions, just feel free to shoot those to the, to the city's website. 
And again, if you need your um, email address, I'm pat it back to you and I'll make sure you get a copy of the handout if you haven't gotten one already. And thank you very much for your interest in transportation. I do want to point out, we have uh, elected official to come in, uh, Irving Johnson, uh, who's our tax commissioner, has, uh, has arrived. He, he knows the... Uh, uh, he knows the uh, Dresden uh, traffic issue well. He was the, uh, the manager of the tag office in Dresden for many years, I believe. And so, he... Yeah, so if you like it, it's me. If you don't like it. <laughs> so, thanks for coming out. Uh, at this point, I'm going to kind of open the public forum again. We um, be respectful for people and time. Um, we have to ask questions uh, and try to keep the limit. And we'll go, uh, Sir. Yeah. Um, one of the things I got from uh, a couple of years ago is that the city of Brookhaven had handed over all the control of uh, time for the for uh, uh, lights, which seems to be one of the big issues with travel. Uh, over to G dot with this uh, R top program. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it exists because I don't think there's any timing uh, at least out on Claremont Road. If you go over there at 5 o'clock in the evening, it's basically a parking lot. I don't know if any of y'all move down there. Um, I happen to live right along the road. Um, and there was also a time where one of the lights uh, malfunctioned in the middle of the night and it wasn't GDOT's system calling in to, to, to record it as being. Uh, the issue. It was giving 10 seconds to Claremont and, and then moving the half to the side street. And it was showing up as red on, on Google Maps, and uh, I had to call it into them. Um, so I don't think there's any reporting going on, and, uh, it, and it, we certainly haven't seen any improvement in the traffic. Okay. So it doesn't exist, and, and or when will well, we see it? Let's, let's have that question answered. Um, well, Patrick and I will tag team on this, but specifically with Claremont Road itself, I think that's where you're concerned. One of the things with these RTOP is one of the things we need to keep back in what goes on is detection systems. And one of the latest, well, what has been the latest trend is use video detection. Although what we're finding out is video detectors can get spooked by things like the sun. And I think the issue you were talking about in Dresden and Claremont it was, okay. There were some issues on Claremont where, where what we were finding was hard to replicate because by the time we got out there and looked at it, the sun had moved and it was working fine. So there's some of that. I know in the afternoon on Claremont, unfortunately the specific issue of Claremont and Patrick may be able to address what GDOT's working on is it's not within the city of Berkeley. It's, it's south of, it's down at the intersection of Briarcliff and Claremont, which is outside the city of Brookhaven. So unfortunately, there's not much I can do, whether it's RTOP or not. And I know Patrick can address some of that. With the well, this is it. You know, the RTOP corridor for Claremont is 155, starts at Beacon Highway, and goes all the way south to the so south. It starts at Beacon So those signals on the street, so take that back. <laughs> um, but like I said, we're working on, on Claremont. There is a corridor manager, there's a young lady that's out there day in and day out, um, managing the day to day, ensuring that office detection is working, you know, so we don't have issues with video and that type of thing. And we're enhancing our our, our uh, evaluation of the ID5 ramps at Claremont and the intersection of Briarcliff because we know those three intersections are in there. They work in conjunction. If one is off, everything is screwed up. We got traffic backed up on ID5, so we're actively looking at solutions to try to make, fix that safe of the thermal. And you know, by fixing that, you're gonna figure it out that you're gonna have to go to the south of the island. One one other thing I'll say about our top program, and I know me seeing it doesn't exist. Um, traffic will be a lot worse, believe me, if it did exist. And the reason is with these traffic signals, these roads, Claremont and 85 and Park, Peace Tree and Fresno and North Ridge Hills, they're at capacity. When you're at capacity you're just you're making minor trade-offs. You give a fraction of a second more to Dresden, and it messes up Peach Tree, vice versa. And they're playing with fractions of seconds right now on these signals because we're at capacity. They're trying to manage it the best they can. And like we say, we don't. Some people I hear all the time, the signals aren't synchronized. Well, we don't synchronize necessarily synchronize the signals, so you get a smooth green shot all the way through. What we try to optimize. Because we have to consider both the main lines, as, and as Patrick said, the side roads, 
and we're trying to balance everything the best we can to, opt, to make it for all travelers. So it, it's a it's a juggling, it's really a daily juggling match every day. Is there something about Bluetooth and being able to tell how many cars are on the road? Actually, the, Bluetooth actually the does have Bluetooth on it that, that can feed information to, to G. Does they're actually using it? Yes. Okay, yeah, it does. Okay, that's the next question, real quick. Uh, Ma'am, what? A concern that I have is that so much of the new building is being, very, being built very, very close to the road like on Hamas, across from Costco, and the balconies are practically over the road. And it looks to me like that's going to make it impossible in the future to do any kind of road wiping, and yet everywhere that new building starts, that the buffering seems to change, and I'm just wondering about that. Great question. Um, <laughs> I can take a step at it. I mean, the better answer, that's really a some of it's a community development question. There was an LCI study and overlay district developed for Peachtree Road back, I think it was in 2005 or 2006, and well before we became a city. And in that was DeKalb County created an overlay district. One of the requirements of that overlay district is that the buildings, be, any new buildings along Peachtree and Dresden be built up against the right of way, or right up against the road. And that was something that was developed through the community process. And so, as a city, and I'm answering for Ben Simons, who's not here tonight, so I, this is, he'll tell you the same thing. We're kind of restricted because the, that's what our zoning ordinance says has to happen because it's been codified in our ordinances. And so when something comes in for zoning, then they're just complying with the zoning. That's why Walgreens is like it is. That's why Gables is like it is. Um, we do factor in, you know, when we go through that, we do factor in. One of the things with, you're right, we don't allow, it may not allow for future roadway widening for cars, but one thing that is required in addition to building the buildings like that, if you notice, they are required to build in the wider sidewalks and the landscape strips. So on each tree, any building that comes in has to basically build a 15 foot wide sidewalk and have a 10, at least a five foot planking strip from the curb. So they're already, they're already building into that when they build those. Um, on the side roads or on residents, not quite as much, so. <coughs> I have a question for uh, the Patrick of the DOT. You raised the um, speed, or the DOT recommended raising the speed limits on Ashford, Dunwoody, and Johnson Ferry at 40 miles an hour, where we've got schools and parks and driveways for homes. Um, why did they do that? Well, we didn't recommend raising the speed limit. I mean, our, our policy, which is supported by state law, says that, and also the federal regulations in the UTCD says that the speed limit must be set within five miles of what's called the 83 percentile speed. So the 83 percentile speed is a representative speed of vehicles traveling at a critical condition on a particular roadway. So we're required, you know, by law and policy to set it that way. So that's where, if we go out and do speed detection, run right off for an hour and vehicles and the 85 comes in at 38 or 42, I mean, that's the appropriate speed limit for that, that condition is 40 miles per hour. Uh, we do take into consideration crash data, Geometry of the roadway and the adjacent um, features around, you know, if there's parks or driveways, that type of thing. So that does give consideration, but the biggest piece of that that analysis, that study, is that eight to two thousand feet. You said you're going to do an eight p.m. peak on your traffic study. Yes. On Saturdays and uh, noon, there are also also peaks where different distribution of traffic, different volumes of traffic.
why isn't it, or should Apple Valley, and you don't have to answer this, but this is a question you answered in your study, should Apple Valley be subservient to the left turning traffic on Peach Street versus seems to be it's time more to get people up the Peach Street on the front of the hills. Um, so that would help with some of the, uh, the uh, congestion right now. Oh, there's a real quick. Well, and, and I'll bring that up too. That's actually the other one that was part of the art talk, so we were supposed to coordinate it. Right. That's right. why I don't like it. Don't tell me. I'll bring it up. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it up. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, I have a question for uh, Mr. Ross. I appreciate Ms. Cochran's mentioning that this is not traffic study, but transportation studies, and that's what we need to be focused on. And in the whole in that whole Peachtree Dresden Drive intersection, you're just addressing, from my point of view, cars. There's no bike lanes, there's no safety place, and you just have more traffic coming through. You know, what about bicycles and pedestrians? And how does it fit into the bike lane? So the, uh, in case everybody could hear that, the question was uh, why aren't, or there should be consideration in the, the uh, the, the TOD study for bikes and pedestrians, um, and uh, there, there definitely will be. And uh, the, 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 the biggest concern that we've heard is the traffic congestion, uh, and so that's what we have focused on so far. Um, but there, uh, there, there are mediums that we were showing in there, uh, in those concepts that we would like to get in Peach Street. Uh, to allow, uh, maybe there's a stage crossing in Peach Street for better, better pedestrian crossings. Um, but, uh, it, it absolutely will be considered as part of the, the, the analysis and the design. The design, when, when, when these improvements are designed and constructed, that's, the, that's, that's really when we can make the biggest impact uh, and improvements for pedestrians and bikes. Yeah, I noticed that you didn't have a slide up there for the Colonial intersection. Uh, it's only a, less than a thousand feet from the Mars site. Right. And when uh, Walgreens was negotiating for the number of parking places that they would be required to have, they cited that, saying, "Well, we're within a thousand feet of a transit station, so we can get away with some reduced parking spaces." That's a pretty critical intersection too, with a lot of congestion. Are you going to widen your scope of study and include that in addition to Dresden it, and North Truth? It's included in the analysis as part of the for the rezoning process, and so it will be in the study. Yes. Uh, sir. Hi, uh, Derek Williams. I have a question for Richard or Patrick. I know some call we have the new pedestrian lanes. Thank you, guys, for that. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have to hit anybody. Yeah. Uh, are there any plans to, once you get further down past the and storage to implement? I know a lot of pedestrians, they like to run along that way. Yeah. Are there any plans to implement either a sidewalk or something where they can run along? Towards the right side, all the properties are on the left side. You're talking about the call walk? Yeah, towards the distance. Okay, can you actually that? We actually have a project under design right now to extend the sidewalks from Cheshire Way, where basically they end right now, all the way down to Green Meadows, tied to Green Meadows, uh, to the sidewalk. And part of that actually, there's a segment of that between East Osborne, the segment between East Osborne and Cheshire. It will actually be built to multi-use path standards because our bike path plan actually calls for a multi-use path along that part of Dresden, uh, of Caldwell, and the multi-use path will eventually extend over to Apple Valley and down Apple Valley to tie to where the Mars station is. But so we actually are under, and we're hoping to get the plans wrapped up in the next month and get it under construction this summer. So yeah, I believe we're funding for that already. Right? It's already funded by council, so we're just trying to work through the last details right now on that. So and the second part question, uh, I know some of the speed bumps have the paint a little stripping off. Is there any plans or considerations for fluorescent type paint or repainting of the um, we will look, I know when we repaved the road, well, there's two parts of it. The the speed bumps that are north of Cheshire in the area we repaved. They have brand new thermoplastic put on there, which should last. The ones to the south, um, well, we can look. You know, we look at 
that with the um, existing speed homes that are not replacing, but also goes into our paving schedule to know, you know, if we know we're going to be paving the road in the near, like the next year or so, we're not going to spend the money. We know we're going to have to replace those speed homes. Then it can move and replace those speed homes. So we'll do that as part of that. But if we know it's going to be a while, we'll refresh the painting on the paint on that. Um, we look at that occasionally. If there's a specific one, you can submit it to the city and we can look at it. Um, yeah, Karen, okay. and then I'll go with you. Um, my question has to do with the current congestion as opposed to planning. <clears throat> Is there a way that our police could enforce or our city could put signs up or something to keep people out of the intersections so that when the light is green, we don't have cars sitting there, they need to stop and not go through and there's a lot. We actually, we get to I think that, and Patrick may be able to add on to this, we are, we've got a pilot program going on in the Perimeter Summit area. It, if you go to uh, the Perimeter Summit and um, Parkside Place or some of the other intersections, they're doing the install of the Do Not Block the Box. And as part of that, we're doing some before and after studies to determine effect. So the Georgia DOT, I believe, is also um, studying one at Claremont at the Sands Club Light, I believe, for a Do Not Block the Box. It's funny, I, we just, I finished talking about that when I left work today, but we've got about 40 locations that we're going to look at on state routes and in this area, though some of those are clear line. At Sam's, at the two ranks, at I-85, and, um, and those are the three for now. And we're, we're actively looking, and there's probably, we're looking to do it. I've got part of the grant we just got from GDOT for the additional safety money includes doing do not block the box at Ashford W. Johnson's Ferry intersection. So you'll be seeing some more of that over the next coming months. You'll see some more. And it's an active program. You'll see a lot more of that coming in the next few years because it's a safety measure that actually does help and does show the work. So it's got a few tickets in there. Well, that's got to be covered too. I've never seen a road lighting permanently solve a traffic problem. Are there any alternatives to single passenger vehicles? You know, being considered. Well, I, mean, I, mean, I can tell you, when I talked to uh, uh, Keith Parker and Marta, they're um, they're changing their um, I guess bus. They're not they're going away from just one style bus, a big large bus. And they're actually having smaller community style buses that are supposed to be able to go through neighborhoods. Uh, they're going to start uh, testing some of that. Uh, is uh, he had told me that Brookhaven may be a, a test area for that. Um, also, with, uh, almost uh, like a bus on demand type thing where you have a route and you, and someone like a Uber, you hit it, and then the next time it goes, it will go by closer to your to your house or that kind of stuff, that level. Um, uh, so he had he expressed those things to me. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to meet with him, I think, in the next two or three months to get um, to, uh, to follow up um, and and really push forward uh, trying to let's let's be the test subjects. Um, let's be the guinea pigs. So I like that going on into it too. So um, <laughs> yes, I want to comment on the police officer or the Ashley Delegate from inside of the who is going to tell officers to do the job is of just standing there doing nothing? <laughs> is also a quarter that has a time traffic light system. And um, what we do with the officers there, everybody says, well, let's put an officer out to direct traffic. Well, that's what and some of the backup we found this week on the Ashford Delaney quarter was because the officer at the soccer field was directing traffic, but he wasn't paying attention to the traffic light, so it was backing traffic up for miles in either direction. What that officer is there gets back to the don't block the box. That's our right now perimeter. The perimeter CID pays for those. Those aren't paying for the city. That officer is there to, to basically do the do not block the box and keep people from blocking the intersection. That's what his job is. He wasn't doing anything. Okay. Well, they, they're supposed to monitor that, and that's what they're supposed to be doing. He's 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 Well, he's being paid for by the PCID. I don't think he's an active officer. Unless, no, chief confirmed that for me. So, um, 
And I'm sure Chief is back here. He'll hear that. No mention that. I'm sure to the officer that's on there. Okay. Ma'am. Well, I have a follow-up question. This is the average one for all of y'all tired of my emails about the dump trucks. But if the, if the speed limit on Ashford Dunwoody is going to be 40, you know the police won't even try to stop anybody. 49 is what they've been cut before they even attempt to stop anything. That's, that's by the state law. Right, that's state law. But, second, I mean, I've, I've been working from home since October, and my office overlooks Ashford Dunway, so I have a front row seat to traffic from 5.30 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon while I'm working. And if we're going to allow that speed limit to be 40, and it should be 49 before you stop anybody, We've got to do something about these big trucks. We've got, and I'm telling you, they're not doing 49. They're doing faster than 49. These are loaded down car carriers. These are loaded down 18 wheeler trucks full of fuel. These are dump, 18 wheeler dump trucks. And the best ones, I mean, I've seen like four of these in one day, or six axle 18 wheelers, wide load. Hauling equipment and just the equipment weighed 82,000 pounds. Well, that piece of equipment was already 22,000 pounds over the limit for the road. Now, if they're allowed to do 49 miles an hour, when they go up down that hill in front of, I'm, I'm in downhill part of Pennsylvania, and they go down that hill and slingshot up that hill and around that corner. School was out today. Guess what's going to be happening tomorrow? All those little bumper high kids from the YMCA are going to be crossing that street. We already had someone killed in that street. Oh, they need you your river. Oh, I've been out there many times. They don't make much of me. I mean, I've seen it all. I've got pictures of an 18 wheeler jackknife in the Montgomery school zone. My neighbor got t bone sitting in her driveway was picked up by a speeder two summers ago. I'm on my sixth mailbox. <laughs> you know, so fine, fine if you're if it's going to be 40. But for God's sakes, let's get these 18 speeding 18 wheelers off our street. I mean, that's my that's my thing. I was going to say, that's something that can be handled by a city ordinance. No, well, yeah, well, you know, I'm still waiting for that ordinance. No, but yeah, that's the city ordinance. We have the city ordinance in place, and it's just it, we're working actively working with our PD to get that enforced. And, and um, awesome. so, I've had two long conversations with Brandy Gurley. Now, you and somebody to get that wide load of 18 wheeler that's about the tall and that's 80,000 pound piece of equipment, they got to have a permit. Are y'all issuing permits to these shops? Jerry's, do children's. No, we have a new vision permit. Well, they're supposed to have permits. And that is, I mean, that is yeah, the law. For all the side of the loads, and they have a specific right, and I, I'll be willing to suggest they have no reason on that route. Well, I can tell you it's not because I work with Lexus and I know all that. So, yeah. I'm, it is not. Actually, done what it is not at all. Johnson Ferry is the same. Johnson Ferry is the same. That's a good idea. Having gone to your idea, is there a way to have a separate speed limit posted for trucks or large vehicles? Oh, there's a sign that says no trucks. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, it says no trucks. Over 50 feet. And you're getting the way more trucks than you used to get. It used to be just a couple of them.
to drive in the right lane. I mean, on interstates, that's possible because you've got multi lanes and that type of thing. But on, on arterial or long streets, I don't know necessarily how to do it. How can we get the DOT to let it go back down to 35 miles an hour? Everybody back so. That issue has been um, expressed a lot in the conversations we've had with the community. And it really is a complicated issue because, like Patrick talked about, you know, state law weighs in on it. It's very prescriptive about what you're allowed to do. But there are roadway design strategies that you can use that would cause traffic to slow down. Um, you, that would have to be a conscious desire to do that, things like using narrower lanes or to uh, weed the road, you know, a little bit so that vehicles are forced to slow down. But that's a conscious decision that the city would need to make because that does slow everybody down, not just the trucks. So we'll, we'll bring some more information to the community, Charette, about that and test some ideas out. Um, but it it has a lot to do with the width of the lanes, with you know how much what's called friction there is on the sides of the road, how, how many cars are turning into the corner from side streets, how much pedestrian traffic and bicycle traffic you have. So in some areas, communities really consciously want to slow vehicles down, whether that's what we want to do with Ashford Dudley. We need to have more discussion about it. But you might want to think about that, you know, and, and come to the community charrette and have us think through that. Maybe they orange. About the, the way that they're allowed to determine the speed on those things, don't think just because they're allowed to do that, but they should. And here's the way I'm thinking on this. Okay. That corridor has schools, Ashford Dillon, Lyons, and A, and residential students coming in here. So you have to look at what's reasonable. To let the drivers determine the speed is kind of equivalent to letting your children set their own bedtime. <laughs> um, this doesn't make sense. Is there a The way it's a perception of speed limits are set. Speed limits, to some extent, are set by what is reasonably. It comes down to enforcement a lot of times. That's why they use the 85th percentile speed and what's reasonably enforceable. You can set it at 35, but there'd be so much violations. Is that you know you'd be using a speed trap? And part of where this is, and there you know it's, it's we're covered covered by state law, and the state law. I mean, kind of a little bit of my opinion, the state law is kind of governed by what happens in the rural areas of these states. And it's not real applicable. Unfortunately, it's not real applicable to urbanize. Is this, is this the answer to the speed trap issue, basically? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, all our communities around South Georgia and some in the metro area would have uh, a road that people would be going 50 miles an hour on the road and then they lower the speed limit to 25 or 30 in a short amount of time. They do that, they set Mr. Officer up right next to a door, hit everyone with a laser, get tickets, and basically fund their entire operations. And this, and what I'm hearing, you know, knowing kind of history behind that, this is the answer to that. That, and unfortunately, state law dictated by a lot of times rural folks um, and rural issues, um, we're stuck with that. Uh, so we can talk to our state legislators about that. Um, uh, Fran Taylor, Tom Taylor, um, and Scott Holcomb and such. And that's stuff you guys, we can you know, do that. And say, hey, you know, maybe what's good for rule, we need to figure out what we can do here for the urban area. But unfortunately, you know, we can go around and around on that. Um, but that's probably the end where we're going to have to point our direction at. Could some of the pedestrian stuff from Beaver Highway be incorporated up there to slow things down? Certainly slow things down on Beaver Highway. And again, that's, that's part of it. That's what the studies, that's yeah. what we're doing with the studies.
study, and I, you know, she talked about is it, is it as a community do we want to, to slow down that road and do these different things? Yes. I think uh, I'm kind of with you guys. But I do also want to be have some innovative, um, you know, turning things, um, in narrowing the roads, putting a tree line streets, uh, and such parking on the sides, the things that. Um, and yeah, I've seen Rich like not say it down, but, uh, <laughs> but things that are, have been shown to be effective in slowing down traffic um, and, and such. Um, so, there was another question I saw, Man Blue. Yeah, I vote for Murphy Kendall. Yes. I vote for Murphy Kendall pretty much every day at this long goal rate. And, and like the Men's Street red lights, I mean, people are running them absolutely consistently at 75 miles an hour. And, you know, I've never seen a police officer ever. There. I mean, it must be so easy just, just to take a tag for these cars and, and, and give people tickets. I've never seen that happen. If it, if it goes up to 40 miles an hour down that hill, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have even less chances of breaking for that set of rights. It's going to make it even more dangerous to, to cross the park. The speed limit's already been changed, and I, I hear you, that's getting going back to the design and, and, and what we have to do with the study and, and push for. And as you guys in the community, it, you know, not just me, but you guys in the community, you're speaking up now. But go, go to these public events, go to these charrettes, it, um, ask for that, those things. Um, and, you know, we listen real well when we hear the same thing over and over again. Um, and so that's, you know, there's going to be a, a way, you know, way forward on that. And it, I know, we want to stop it now. We all can want to just... Can we not as please stop and tell them to slow down? Because we can go talk to all of us, like we were talking about in the meantime. You got a sit down. Well, I'm, unfortunately, as we pointed out, and it's the, 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 fact, the simple fact of the matter. Where we're going to invite us into Wiki is they're not going to take into account until someone gets killed on that road. And that's just, Measures, tabulates, 
gives us the speeds of the cars individually, the time of day that they're speeding, um, and you'll be amazed that the perception is out there that they're speeding, the results we get. I mean, there, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, you know, where there are a couple cars speeding, but generally it is not a problem as it's perceived. Yeah, I have a clue about how anybody speeds in this town, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go more than seven miles an hour down Ashford, Dun yeah. Dunwoody Road, you know. I, it, 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 I, so, but I, I'm curious, because, and the reason I ask this is because, I mean, Everybody in this room knows to cut through streets, right? So if you're tracking counts at certain lights, I live right behind the Marta. I don't ever go south on Peachtree. I go down to Caldwell. I take Bubbling Creek. We, we all know what the cut throughs are, right? Because we have to do it. I, I work at Perimeter. I travel six miles and it takes me 45 minutes on a good day. That's worse than New York City, okay? And that's taking the cut throughs. So my question is more around Everyone's doing cut throughs. Everyone in this room has their way of getting from A to B versus heading down to Peachtree or the main road. So I think we're missing out on counts. And I think the counts are showing probably light of what it, what reality is. And uh, to answer your question about the, the what, what do we do besides trickling the traffic counts, uh, just it, for a generic study, at the bare minimum, we, we go out there and we, we'll go walk the whole corridor, we'll drive it multiple times. We do site visits during peak hours so we can observe what happens. Uh, generic study-wise, public input is absolutely critical. These are very good meetings for us to hear these things. We learn a lot. Uh, we could spend a month out there. We still, we wouldn't, there's no way we can spend the time out there that y'all do. So these, these meetings are very valuable. And the things that you share are very, it's, it's very important to us in what we do. Uh, for our study for the TOD, we're fortunate to have two or three people that actually live in Brookhaven working on the traffic study. And so we, we know all about, and besides what we've heard, we have people that, that drive these different things. And, and, yeah. I mean, and, and again, if the waves effect with all traffic is, you know, as, as I think we said in the last meeting, you know, uh, lands or this region will only sense a certain amount of pain. And so we all know, like you said, you drive down the road, let's say Dresden, um, everyone knows, they live around here, that how bad it's gonna be. And there's so much pain, and even the cut through people with waves, at certain points, when it's so bad, they take the right, they go into the, the neighborhood, and when we do this, when, when these, the studies come out, these improvements happen, we all know what's gonna happen, is that immediately once it's fixed, that the people that are going to the neighborhoods will get off the neighborhoods and flow on the Dresden right. and keep on going and take it right, and which will back it up again. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a yin and yang. Hence the thing, we're not gonna solve traffic. We're just not gonna solve it. We're gonna mitigate it, change it, whatever. And we do the best we can. But we could build a tunnel through our, 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 uh, our city from south to north with all the country. Monterey. No, not. So this is, um, you know, again, it's trying to make it the best as possible. Jen. So a couple things. I just want to piggyback on what she said. Since we know the residents that what the cut throughs are, and we know that with the increased density we're going to get with the new developments, is it possible that we can provide something to the, the traffic study so that they look at those roads as well? So that because if we're having a situation with people cutting down Caldwell to avoid Peach Street, or they're cutting Sylvan to avoid uh, Dresden, or all these, you know, we really need to take that into effect, uh, into account because we make these changes, the density comes in, and all of a sudden I'm over at your house saying I couldn't get home today, and I know you don't want that. We've already had that discussion. So. Um, and the second part is when you said tunnel, I say yay. Um, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Is it something that GDOT is ever going to look at putting in some kind of local road between Reading and Dresden for the APU neighborhood? Because if we did that, we would relieve a lot of the neighborhood traffic from our arteries and give us a little more for the density that we're planning so that people who are going from Town for Caven to Reading or Toby or something would come in there instead of going through the Dresden intersection. 
What, I'll let Jamie talk on your first question first, and then Patrick. Your, your question will be, what else do we look at besides traffic counts to figure out what's going on? Um, and Rob is right. We, the public out, outreach part is huge. Even if you can't come to meetings, sending us emails on issues that you notice. Um, I was actually spending a couple of afternoons riding through the neighborhoods watching cut through people um, because it's not going unnoticed that the people living in the neighborhoods with these big trucks and other things, you know, making their neighborhoods not very desirable. So, you know, we just, I think it's a matter of, the mayor says, there's, you know, a lot of things have happened already and we're kind of having to deal with what's happened in the past. Um, but going forward, we can be smarter about how we plan infrastructure, roads, street connections, pedestrian paths, pedestrian paths, you know, all the options we use to get around to, to make it a more lo logical system and coherent system so that we don't have these spillover effects happening in, in neighborhoods. Yeah, because it's a yin and yang. We fix this when we make that with exactly. that, so we need to take both into consideration. Exactly. We're in a growing area of Metro Atlanta in general, but Brookhaven is one of the fastest growing communities in the entire region. So you all, all of us are challenged. I spend a ton of time in Brookhaven. I spend a lot of money in your city, by the way. Yeah. So I, um, I, I do understand, and we do try to follow up on things. It's just a, a lot of these issues don't have a simple and, answer. And, and it, it, it's right off the bat, you know, yeah. and we, we were talking about the last night about move a light here, it affects this neighborhood, it makes this other place better. And so yeah. that's the things we will have to go. But you had a question about that. Yeah, about another connection to Peachtree. You know, I give you my personal opinion. I think it's, it would be a great idea. But you know, from my professional perspective, I mean, it would be a tremendous undertaking, engineering-wise, going underneath the rail, the CSX, and also the you know, water tracks. Um, you know, the city would have to take a lead on something like that because we're looking at a, a, a regional overview and trying to see what impact that would have to the region. I mean, it would be great for Brookhaven, but. For us to participate in something like that, we have to look to see what it does for me and how it fits into ARC's larger one. Well, I'll throw a little bit of a phone in there for you guys for the larger picture of it. There's an entrance for gay little apartments, and people get hit all the time because they don't have any traffic calls. Sorry, but they don't. <laughs> and if we put the thing to connect, then we can put a light there. Well, the other, the other issue, I will say, one of the projects in the comprehensive transportation plan it doesn't address vehicles. But one of the projects in the comprehensive transportation plan is a pedestrian bicycle connection from Caldwell over to Town Brookhaven, over under it, you know, haven't decided, but between those two points, we put a, basically a bridge over the railroad tracks and Beach Street Road to get over, which the feeling there is at least it will help the residents that live in that neighborhood get over to Town Brookhaven without having to get in their car, which will help take traffic off the road. I guess in, in a, just a half second more, the, what I was thinking of and the reason I bring this up is because we are going to grow and we know that and I think the overlay says that Caldwell and Apple Valley are going to become more different. And so just kind of keep that in your back pocket because if those two roads become more dense then we've really got a problem. Very much welcome that. 
Um, but then that brings, when you put that office space, then more people will come from the outside. Uh, we, we're, you know, we're not the fault of all Brookings uh, traffic, but we're the, the traffic problems for Buckhead. We're the traffic problems for uh, uh, Perimeter. We're the traffic problems for you know, 285 or wherever else. So again, it's the, the regional issue. Uh, if we, you know, if there was more people live closer to the, where they work, there would be a lot less you know, traffic. Um, and so I, I would be for more you know, office uh, uh, such. But again, uh, the city can't dictate you, uh, or we have zoning, and we can say this, you can do this use here. But until there's a financial interest, that property owner may, won't build that until it makes economic sense for them. So we can't control landowners coming to us asking for zoning. If they will, you know, as you know, well, our job is to, 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 to look at it. One of the criteria is traffic and, and, and such like that. And that's you know, something I'll take a look at when things come, come down the pipeline. Uh, the, so again, most of our traffic is not for Cayman residents, as we know. It's the people cutting through. I can't remember, do you remember what the number was? It's like we have 25,000 cars exiting from Brookhaven, exiting out. 36, 30, 40 something thousand are coming through Brookhaven, just going through it. And then, so, um, and that's not, so it's just, it's, unfortunately, we, we, live in a, we live in an area that we followed Indian trails and different trails. We did not have a grid system. We're, um, I don't think anyone would want us to propose us to go into a grid system because we buy a whole, whole bunch of land to you know, and tear down houses and, and, and put in roads. I don't think there's any out I don't want to go down that road. But, so we are, we are just trying to look at what we have and, and try to make the best as possible. I know that doesn't quite answer your question. Uh, it, it does, but I know I'm all about economic growth. Yeah. And people are trying to live closer to where they work. Yes. So the more that if, if, we, if we could bring more business to our city, that would increase our tax dollars, but it would also give the opportunity for people to live and work closer. And, and economic development of the four, we had a, a, a uh, retreat earlier today, I mean earlier this year, and there was four areas of concentration for us was parks and green space acquisition, uh, operations, communication. communication, and then uh, economic development. So we're, we're, I, I agree with you, and we are working for that, but you know, that's... Probably don't want to run your mom on State Farm and find out either. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I mean there's, you know, the, the, and when State Farm comes in, Traffic, we're talking about traffic. What we do, we can't, you know, right across the board, they put something in. We, it is, you know, we're, we're going to feel it. But guess what? That not so happens when that building comes in. Our property values go up, folks, because there's going to be more people wanting to live in this area. Um, so there's this trade offs left and right. Uh, and it, yes. So I want to make a comment to your comment about not having any control um, of the, you know, what comes to you, um, when in fact you do have control. Like you can deny apartments, right? Sure good. So if you deny apartments, developers, ooh, they have to work a bit harder, go and run some numbers and figure out how to go make profit and then bring something back that is more fitting with what we want, which is less density. Um, and so I just want to make that comment. We do have control. We can say no. Oh, we definitely do. And that would, that would uh, change the dynamics. We'll see how things go with these projects. Hey, what's going on about the tag office? Yeah. I'm with the tag office? What about the burger? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's kind of goes to the building there. Um, that, the actual tag office itself, you know, and that the zoning would be the move that's um, do you want to keep this, this, this is not all about traffic. That's just going to happen. Where is moving. Where, where are they out? It's moving. Yes. Yes. It's, I think it's on a ground from, uh, when's the last of the year? Herb, do you want to answer that? Answer what? Where are they out? What am I agreeing to? Yeah. No one. It's moving. I don't know if it moves. Where are they going to be moving?